tonight's show. I'd like to say thanks again to Monster Magnet for stopping by to hang out with us. But before we leave you tonight, I want to tell you about yet another band that you might want to check out, and I really hope that you already have, The Descendants. Now, the history of punk rock finds its roots tangled up within the confines of groups like Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, and The Kinks, just to name a few, all of which were innovators of modern music through their use of distortion and the revolutionary power chord. However, it wasn't until the introduction of bands like The Stooges with Iggy Pop and The Ramones and Black Flag that a more aggressive form of rock and roll emerged under the moniker of punk rock. Now, in 1978, Los Angeles-based trio of drummer Bill Stevenson, guitarist Frank Mavetta, and bassist Tony Lombardo, influenced by the aforementioned groups, formed The Descendants. The next year, 1979, marked the release of their first single for Ride the Wild. Then came the 80s and the emergence of a fourth member, Milo Alkerman, who became the frontman for the group. Now, 1981 really becomes the establishing year for the band as they released their first EP, a fast-paced and raw 7-inch entitled The Fat EP. The EP places The Descendants within the underground hardcore community with songs like Wiener Schnitzel and My Dad Sucks. Now, later that year, Milo decided to leave the band to pursue an education in biochemistry, but nonetheless, the band released the LP, the amazing album, Milo Goes to College, which featured Bikeage, Hope, I'm Not a Loser, Catalina, so many. And it isn't long afterwards that drummer Bill Stevenson dissolves his membership to play with the Hermosa Beach-based Black Flag with Henry Rollins. Now, 1985 sees the resurgence of the Descendants, this time with ex-SWA guitarist Ray Cooper, who replaces Frank Nevetta as the Axeman. Bill Stevenson also returns to restore the band's rhythm section. I Don't Want to Grow Up is then released and reintroduces the Descendants as a driving force in modern rock with songs like Silly Girl and many others. They also start to receive more airplay by college and alternative radio stations around the country. The next year, 1986, brings the departure of bassist Tony Lombardo, who is then replaced by the future bass player for Dag Nasty, Doug Carrion. Now, with the second half of the rhythm section restored by the arrival of Carrion, the group releases Enjoy, which contains a great cover of the Beach Boys classic Wendy and the song Cheer and many others. Now, almost a year after the release of Enjoy, there's yet another change to the lineup of the band. 1987's lineup sees the arrival of Massacre Guys guitarist Steven Egerton and bassist Carl Alvarez from the Bad Yodlers. Now, with this new lineup, the future of the band becomes promising with two releases in 1987. The first, a full-length album entitled All, with Clean Sheets, and the follow-up live album, Liveage, and then Hall Raker in 1988. It is at this point that Milo decides that his musical career is temporary, tempor excuse me, temporarily finished. So he leaves to pursue a master's and eventually a doctorate degree in biochemistry, so he's back to school. Now, the remaining members of the band, Stevenson, Egerton, and Alvarez, changed the name of the band to All after their last studio album as The Descendants. After several years, Milo approaches his former descendants, now the guys of All, in hopes of writing music once again with them. They oblige, and in 1996, the return of this Descendants once again, which is excellent. They released the album Everything Sucks later that year, and then a spot on the 1997 Warp Tour. They also were here on 120 Minutes. The Descendants, within the course of an on-again, off-again career, nevertheless managed to become one of the punk rock genre's most influential bands. I think it's cool to, you know, to have had a, a place, you know, in, in the, the grand scheme of music. I mean, that's really, you know, it's exciting. I mean, we never thought that anyone would ever even listen to us or anything when we started the band when we were kids. We just, you know, did it because it was fun. So it's cool um, to sort of, I guess, be part of like a continuum, you know, yeah. just you know, to, to have had influences as like a really young kid and then to have become an influence on like other people. That, that's cool. <laughs> was the descendants from the Warp Tour last year in Salt Lake City, Utah. We'll be coming to you next week from the Warp Tour, so be sure to check it out. But right now, we'll leave you with a video from Everything Sucks. It's the video for I'm the One. I'm Matt Pinfield for 120 Minutes. Have a great